Welcome to episode 31 of Ticker Points. I'm your host, Ronan Scott. This week's show, uh, we've got a piece with Richard McGuire from the East Belfast GA Club. Um, they were recently in the news for uh, probably stories that we didn't want to hear about, but we recorded a piece with them about what the hopes are for the future for the club, uh, what the challenges are ahead, and where they think they can go. Um, but before we get to that, I wanted to speak to uh, one of our columnists, Patrick Morrison. He's the our goalkeeping coach, um, and every week he's gives us advice on how goalkeepers can improve themselves. But with the new rules coming in regarding kickouts, um, I wanted Patrick to answer a few questions for us about how these rules are going to affect the intercounty game uh, later in the year. Um, so, Patrick, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks very much, Roland. I'm just glad to be on. Thanks very much for asking me. To start, I wanted to ask you, what are these new rules concerning the kickouts? Uh, well, Roland, I just actually had to go and look them up, just to make sure I was sure about them all. So the kickout is now taken from the 20 meter line from the from the centre, and uh, the ball cannot be kicked backwards. All players need to be outside the 20 meter line and outside the semi circle, and has to be 13 meters from the ball until it has been kicked. And the ball should travel no less than 13 meters outside the 20 meter line uh, before being played by any member of the defending team. The goalkeeper can also not receive the ball back off the defender that the ball is initially passed to which is, is the most recent one and the one that's causing more, <laughs> most of the problems at the minute. Okay, so the next question would be, what's the purpose of these rules? Why do we have them? Well, as a goalkeeper myself, that's that's a question <laughs> I've been asking myself and would like to get a, a, a full, what would say, explanation for. Uh, we know what Crew Park say, why they've been, uh, took them in, there's partly the reason they're they're trying to protect what what they deem as a, a down skill in the in the high catch and they're looking more contests out the field and they're trying to restrict the amount of kickouts that are played into the corners you know from teams working them out and <coughs> it just baffles me why they need, feel the need to, to play around with certain rules and and not others so you look at other sports like soccer. Soccer, there's a lot of soccer teams now are actually playing the ball out from the six yard box where the two Santa Haas will come in the six yard box and they'll play out from there. Even in rugby when for the last 20 minutes teams just boot the ball back and forward, back and forward to try and kill the momentum and make the other team work harder. And hurling, which is seen as, as the pure uh, GAA sport now that there's more defensive play in hurling, sweepers being dropped in, short uh, puck outs there's no rules been been taken in to stop that so why take them into Gaelic football is, is is probably one of the biggest questions a lot of goalkeepers and a lot of coaches are asking at the, at the minute one thing I imagine a lot of teams will be wondering is how they can use these rules to their own advantage well I'd say the main players that will get any advantage out of it is probably the opposing team facing the goalkeeper so if they press up or are playing zonal and they know that they, the, the, the goalkeeper can only play it forward, can only play it 13 metres, and cannot receive the pass back, it reduces the amount of outs that the player has. So once that once they know where, where the defender is going, if it is played short, they know that the goalkeeper is not an option, which allows them to close down more effectively and maybe turn the ball over in a very dangerous position. <clears throat> in terms of the team that's taking the kick out, the advantage it probably gives to them is it means they're going to have to come up with another way. If that's the way they played, like Tyrone or Leash or even Mullen to a certain extent, they're going to have to come up with other ways and other means of, of getting the ball out without having to use the goalkeeper. Okay, and finally, um, how do you think they're going to work? Ooh, that's, that's a tough one because, in my opinion, they didn't really have any effect on the game before the rules. Yes, You'd have seen people like Nell Morgan and uh, Graham Brody and to a certain extent Roy Began, maybe even Sean Patton as well, coming out with the ball. Now, that's that's four keepers out of the, what, the thousands of keepers that are all over the, con uh, the country. So in terms of how you gauge if they're working positive or negative, it's, it's very hard to even follow them because you can't really say they had a positive or negative influence before the rules. You can say that had a positive or negative impact in a certain situation if 
they got a score or if it was they lost the ball and score against. But overall, these playing a ball back to a goalkeeper was not what was winning championships or leagues. So it's very going to be very, very hard to say whether they had a positive or negative influence on the game. Okay, great. Thanks, Patrick, for your time. Appreciate that. We're going to speak to Richard Maguire from the East Belfast uh, Gaelic Club. Um, earlier this year, the club started up um, off the back of a tweet from Richard to Dave, just sort of trying to gauge interest in East Belfast, and it just took off. So... It's been going for a little while now. They've already played a couple of games. They've played a good few games across a number of different codes. I think this week they're starting a hurling. But I wanted to get him in just to sort of see where they're at. So, Richard, thanks for coming in. Or thanks for uh, coming up online with me. Um, I've got a few questions to ask you, just how you're getting on so far. But just to start, tell us why, what the impetus was for getting this club going. Uh, well... Impetus may be a strong word. Um, Dave and I were just having a, a conversation um, about the lack of Gaelic sport in East Belfast and he came up with the idea of maybe we'll just send out a tweet and see if there's any, any interest in starting it. So, um, you know, we thought, well, we'll, we'll maybe try a, a, an underage team uh, and develop a club from there. Okay, since the announcement of the club starting up, what sort of interest have you had? Well, the interest is, was phenomenal right from the very start. Um, I think both myself and Dave were just overwhelmed with, with people coming forward right from uh, within within the first few minutes of sending out the tweet. Um, so, you know, there was, Dave was phoning me throughout the, the first Sunday and saying, you know, Richie, I think we've got uh, a male football team here. And then a while later he was saying, you know, there's there's enough here for a hurling team. Uh, and then the ladies football team and the, the camogie team all came sort of swiftly in behind. So. Um, the interest was was brilliant playing wise, and then also, you know, a lot of people come forward and saying, you know, I used to play or I used to do this or I've never played, but I'd I'd happily help out, and uh, we've been really lucky to get people that 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 are keen and willing to do uh, committee type positions and uh, chairman and treasurers and uh, and people like that. So um, the interest is, has been phenomenal, and and support has come from. You know, clubs, our own clubs in County Down, uh, clubs across Ireland, and really as far as as America and Australia. So it, it's been really fantastic. That's good. That's good. How many teams are you hoping to field, and um, uh, how how many teams have been playing so far, and has COVID affected things? Yeah, so we've had um, five teams out, uh, pretty much every week since we've been uh, since COVID has allowed us to. So. Um, a, a male senior football team and a reserve team, the Camogies, the Hurling and the, and the ladies football. So um, it, it's, it's been all go um, and those teams are playing and training week in, week out. Um, as far as COVID goes, you know, we, we've been following the regulations and um, we're lucky to have actually a lot of uh, medical staff and, 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 you know, nurses and doctors and, and physios and all within the club. So their understanding of, of, of COVID and keeping us all right and keeping us all safe has been has been invaluable. I'd like to ask what the what the main challenges are for this club. I suppose to a few of us have an idea of what challenges face clubs. What challenges are you facing? So I suppose any any new club is gonna have um plenty of challenges, especially one started in a global pandemic. You know, we've we've uh, challenges like getting the bank account open, um, which which we still haven't got, um, and, and we've been working away to this point, um, just just in good faith for a lot of people, and um, and the support of, of of some individuals. So, um, that's been a challenge. Um, getting players on the pitch. You know, we we've so many players. Um, for like we've we've over hundred male players, hundred female footballers. Uh, many of which have never played the sport before, um, and we we're having to balance those maybe more experienced heads versus the versus the newcomers. So we've had great crack along the way. Like you know, we we had one 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 incident of a guy who you know when the ball bobbled about in, in the box, his natural reactions took over and he just went for a header. You know the the, the soccer players. Uh, you know that that was just his his instincts and his uh, you know to to go for that. So. Um, there's great things like that, you know, 
some cricketers have come along to hurling and and you know their their handling skills are fantastic so now we just need to teach them how to how to hit a ball as well so um you know the the challenges are great uh probably probably our main challenge at the moment is just playing facilities you know Belfast City Council have been good at supporting us and 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 helping us get get pitches um in Cherryvale and um across the city but there's actually no council pitches in East Belfast so um that's going to be one of our biggest challenges going forward is actually establishing a bit of a home for ourselves and in a regular playing area that's interesting teaching a cricketer how to catch a hurling ball like um an interesting challenge uh my next question is ambitions what ambitions have you got for the next few weeks and for the next year and further well this season is a, is a short one, so um, really there there's there's only really a few weeks left. Uh, we want to continue to get all our teams out uh, and performing on the pitch, and keep them training and keep the keep the performance levels rising. Um, which 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 has been great so far. You know, um, players that haven't played in years, new players. It takes them a while to get ready for playing sport again. Um, so it's great to see the improvement on the pitch um, hopefully when we get the end of the season maybe scratch up our first win um, and that will always be, be an exciting point um, our first hurling match in East Belfast is going to take place this this Thursday night and um, you know we have we have ladies camogie and everything like that, that that's all going on all the time so getting all them teams played all fit and healthy towards the end of the season will, will be fantastic once we get there I think that we really need to start looking at how we how we do our community development, how we um, establish ourselves in the community and, and get familiar with the with the local community, uh, and start to bring more of, of those people from East Belfast into the club and and help them to feel comfortable in that in that environment. You know, and, and a lot of that will start through uh, trying to you know get get a bit of Gaelic football into the schools um, and, and develop a youth section. Okay, it all sounds really great, Richard, doesn't it? The, the the club so far has just been um you know everyone has been so positive and and so willing to to just roll with everything that's come with them you know we've been uh moving pitches we only had one kit for the first few weeks so you know some washing machines are getting overused uh and, and um you know it's being washed on a daily basis for a t for a match the next day so you know everyone that's been part of the club has really just joined in the positive ethos um has has come along and had the best of crack you know there's there's people saying to us you know that that you know they're making making friends they're doing something new they're they're so excited by everything and and, and it really is just 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 amazing to see um and also the local community of east belfast has, you know has really been supportive um a lot of uh organizations have, have reached out to us and give us support and and said we're willing to sponsor bits and bobs so you know it, it has just been a overwhelming the support that's been that's been available there the whole time Richard thanks for your time uh, thanks for talking to us about uh, your club hopefully we'll hear more from you in the future and hopefully it's a success um, but thanks again for your time okay that's our show for this week I'd like to thank all of our guests um, uh, and if, if you wanted to see more of these shows that uh, we've been doing them throughout lockdown you can go to gaeliclife.com and uh, see our take your points list and there's all, all the shows will be there and you can even watch last year's shows too um, but I encourage you to do that and I also encourage you to subscribe to Gaelic Life online the digital subscriptions deals are all there and I encourage you because you can get more stories and more news and all the best GA and Ulster right there but uh, thanks for your time and I hope you'll watch us again in a fortnight's time. Thanks.